Um, I think it's a pretty cool experience. Um, you know, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy um, all of my friends and my family who um, always either text me or call me, you know, after a game or whenever and just ask, you know, how we're doing or how I'm doing. Um, and we also have uh, a linebacker as well, Nakia Henry. He starts at Ole Miss right now. And so it, that's another small hometown name. Um, you know, it feels good. And I, I'm sure he would say the same. It feels good to represent Badea because not many uh, D1 athletes have come out of Badea. So. Hey, Nate, I was wondering if you could tell us what some of the differences are between your past kicker, Rodrigo, and your new kicker, Jack Bud Lesney, specifically with how, you know, Rodrigo is sort of a legend around the Georgia program. Yeah, definitely. Um, Rod, you know, he, he was a different breed. He was, you know, crazy with the kicks and uh, anything you, you asked of him, uh, he would do it. Um, I think uh, Jack is the same way, though. Um, you know, he, he was up under Rod. He got to learn all of his, you know, tricks, and he got to um, learn how he would do things. And, um, you know, Jack has come a long way. And, you know, I think he's a pretty good kicker. And, you know, he proved that in the Arkansas game, and he's been proving that in practice. That's why he's starting. So, um, you know, if he continues to work, he might have a shot at the NFL too. Mike Griffith, then Dean Leggy, please. Uh, yeah, Nick, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, the work you got in there at Arkansas and how you feel like you've um, improved since last season there? Yeah, um, it was – I had well, I had fun going into the Arkansas game. It's always fun getting in on defense. Um, you know, I made two tackles. Um, you know, coming from last season, uh, my weight has dropped a little bit. Um, I don't think it's a huge deal. I'm still fast. Uh, I'm still physical. That's how I was raised up. And that's how the coaches teach us here. Um, uh, I would say from last year to this year, I think that, you know, mentally I'm, uh, you know, more prepared for the games or more prepared for practice. Uh, things are a little bit easier to see uh, and that comes with the maturity of the game and, you know, getting reps. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest thing that I've seen in myself from last year to this year. Nate, you're, you're one of the guys with obviously with a lot of talent that, you know, probably could start at several other places. And, and yet you stay at Georgia. We've seen a lot of guys that have stayed at Georgia rather than hit the portal. Can you talk about the decision to, to, to stay and compete for playing time rather than go somewhere where you could probably start right away? Uh, yeah, well, um, you know, I love it here. I love the guys here. Uh, the coaches are awesome. I mean, there's they're the best. I believe they're the best coaches in the uh, – in the conference and in the nation. Um, so who better to learn from? Um, also, you know, I, I look past football because I know football doesn't last forever. And, you know, the connections here that I would get, uh, the networking that I would get um, will, you know, set me up for a great job afterwards or, and the education here also is really good. So that's probably the biggest reason I've stayed besides, you know, loving who I'm with. And Nate, I wanted to ask about special teams uh, as it relates to a new guy coming in with Cochran. Has, has, I mean, beyond him being there, have you noticed anything that's uh, changed that resulted, uh, that, that game, you know, all the results that you had in our, at Arkansas? It seemed pretty dominant um, on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, you know, since Coach Cochran's gotten here, um, special teams has, has always been a, a huge deal to Coach Smart. Um, but having Coach Cochran here and then Coach Hartley as well doing the special teams, you know, they bring that juice every day that, you know, that um, wants a, or makes us want to get better at special teams because, you know, special teams is also a very big avenue that could lead you straight into the pros. And, you know, you might not start on defense or offense, but if you're on special teams and you get into the league and you play on special teams, that's, you know, that's 600K a year. And that sounds pretty nice. Dash, then Julian, please. Hey, Nate, good to see you, man. Uh, Aziz was asked this uh, question uh, a little bit ago as far as uh, the crowd noise, the artificial noise and whatnot uh, at Arkansas the other day. How much did it seem like a regular road game? How much difference was it? Could you tell what was real and what was fake? Um, I, honestly, I overheard Aziz, and I, I would agree with him. It, it sounded pretty real, and we, we get that same, uh, you know, crowd noise with the, over the speakers or whatever in practice as well. And it sounds real uh, in practice. It's a lot louder. So it kind of hurts your ears sometimes. But, um, 
you know, when you're in there, you don't, you honestly don't even hear it because, uh, you know, you're focused in on what you got to do. And, but like Aziz said, I mean, it, it sounded pretty real and especially with the other fans, you know, yelling as well. Hey, Nate. Um, so just to talk about Arkansas and preparing for Auburn, um, all position groups turned a corner against Arkansas, but needed to be woken up a little bit, it seemed like. So how do you cut that time needed to really get up to game speed? And how important is it to do that faster <laughs> against Auburn? Uh, I mean, it all starts with practice. You practice harder than the game would be, so it will make the game easy. And that's what the coaches, um, you know, they really think is a big deal. Um, you know, always make practice harder. We got to, uh, you know, take each rep like it is a game. Uh, you know, we, we got to do different things, like run to the ball when you know, we're tired because that's what you're going to do in the game. So you, you simulate the game and practice as much as you can. So when you get to the game, it makes it a lot easier. Thank you. Mark, then Chip, please. On the punt team and coverage? Uh, I am not starting, but I'm, I'm on it. Okay. Well, you're, you're a big special teams guy, though. I'm just curious uh, how much pride you guys took to see um, Jake and, and the unit kind of pin them inside the tent a bunch of times and, and you know, uh, how much, uh, you know, what that means for you guys. Oh, man, that was, that was crazy. You know, that's – I'm sure it's happened before, but it probably doesn't happen often. And for Jake to be able to put it in inside the 10 four times and then inside the 20 uh, once to make it five inside the 20, I mean, that's that's just unbelievable. And then our guys that cover down and, you know, Tyson Campbell and then, you know, Eric Stokes or Matt Landers, they're so fast they can get down there so quick. It's, uh, you know, it's definitely an asset and it switches the field and it makes it easier on the defense and the offense. Thanks. Nate, you're obviously a veteran guy. has been a lot, around a long time. I just wonder the the whole COVID factor of the season. Uh, uh, I guess I'll be bold enough to ask you if you if you've had to deal with it personally, and uh, just what is all the protocols and all the hoops that you guys have to jump through. Uh, uh, what is that like? How do you process that? And you know, does it make you nervous, or or is it is it just par for the course nowadays? Um, I would say at first. Uh, everybody was nervous, especially with the students coming back. Um, because I know most schools went straight online. Um, but after a while, it was kind of a regular thing. You know, we always, the coaches are always saying, wear your mask, put on hand sanitizer. We, you know, we got to get tested regularly. So, I mean, it's pretty much part of the everyday life. And honestly, I, it's hard to remember not even wearing a mask before this because I've been so used to wearing one. Thank you. Let's go to Jed, and then we'll end with either Palmer or Jake. I'll let you guys flip the coin. Uh, hey, Nate, I'm, I wanted to ask you, um, going back to, to Brandon's question about representing Vidalia, you know, what is that like? I mean, what do you know about what guys or what people do back there? Are they having watch parties for your games? I know you said they text you after. Just kind of how much do you feel that support knowing everyone's watching you on Saturdays? Uh, it, feels, it feels good. Um, like I said, I, I love it when, you know, I get a phone call or I get a text, um, you know, I'll get some pictures sent to me uh, that say go Nate or, you know, go Lakia. He's my friend that uh, plays at Ole Miss. Uh, it's, it's really cool because, you know, you grew up around the same people. It's a small town, you know, pretty much everybody. Um, and, you know, just to have those people back you up, uh, the hard times don't seem as hard and the good times seem even better. Thank you. Hey, Nate, uh, I, I wanted to ask you about special teams. And, and you know, a lot of, I think a lot of people have this impression that you guys just kind of get put in a spot, you run down the field, you do your job, and then that's it. But what kind of mental preparation, schematic meetings, stuff like that goes into it? How much goes into it? And, and what's a meeting like with, with Scott Cocker? Um, it's, it's a very important um, aspect of the game. And Coach Smart and Coach Cochran and even all the other position coaches, they – uh, say that as well and they believe in special teams um, you know we go through special teams every day it's not just like you know once a week all right here's what we're going to do on punt return or here's what we're going to do on kickoff I mean it's an everyday thing where we're you know trying to make each other better because once you get that good or if you get that good field position it just makes the game 10 times easier for the offense or for the defense so it's you know it's really important and they uh, continue to harp on that every year and that's why we're so successful 
And and what's that meeting like with when you go in with Scott Cochran? What's you know what's kind of he like in the in that setting? Oh, it's it's just stuff. He uh, you know they always got music playing when we're walking in, and then he's always yelling, and Coach Hartley's you know always clapping, and um, you know it's it's a real fun and uh, good learning environment for us. Nate, thank you for your time tonight. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. Okay, everybody, that's it for tonight. Appreciate you tuning.